This week on CrossFeed. Justin, the Jesus freak, Bieber. Give Jesus your heart, but don't expect the popes. Christians in Egypt. Confessing to your iPhone. And morality in America. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. So I um, hope you're all doing well. Uh, glad to be with you. Good to be with you after missing last week when Dale's uh, Packers managed to pull it out. Um, was... <laughs> yeah, there was some doubt in the second half. <laughs> At the beginning of the third quarter, but <laughs> they got it back fourth quarter. We had some friends over; they're big Steelers fans, so uh, it was an interesting game. But we had a good time; it was really fun. So, um, but yeah, pretty excited about our pack. So, um, been uh, been celebrating and and uh, you know trying not to. Uh, Try not to rub it in too much, you know. Well, yeah, well, we celebrated. We officially dedicated our new organ today and had a dedication recital, which was excellent. Uh, truly, it was uh, very gifted. And then uh, the other very exciting news, as uh, Dale knows, is on Friday, I became a grandfather. Ooh. So. That's awesome. So, yep. That's a strange feeling. She's just a little bittiest thing, 5.5 pounds and 17 inches, and she's just a cute little thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, she is she tiny. Is, she is a little peanut, she is. Man, so, I didn't know they made them that small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They do. But she's a cute thing. But speaking of the Super Bowl, so which commercials did you like? You know, overall, I was really disappointed. Like, they started out good. And then they kind of got lame as time went on. Um, the the one sort of glowing beacon in the second half was the Transformers one, uh, was Bumblebee. Um, uh, honestly, I the all, like all the Bud Light ones were good. The Doritos ones were good. Um, you know those had us all laughing, and. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I was I was kind of disappointed overall. It seemed like there was a heck of a lot of Fox ones. Like they couldn't sell enough seats or uh, spots. I mean, oh well, they they reserved a lot for themselves. But now I'll tell you one I did like, and that was the Best Buy, which of course you know with Ozzy Osbourne going what's what you know trying to advertise 4G, and then of course they had Justin Bieber. It's like, like what's a Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> so. Although I don't like Ozzy Osbourne very much myself, but what's a beaver? Which brings us to our first story tonight. Yep. Uh, so you see how I segue from Super Bowl to, to, to beaver. I planned that out uh, carefully. Well done. Uh, this is this, That shows you that this is a quality show, folks. <laughs> uh, oh, good grief. And no, th- see, I didn't ever know this. Um, that, uh, 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 I mean, I, I don't even know. I'm, I'm kind of with Ozzy Osbourne. What's a beaver? I mean, I don't have no idea where this guy came from. He's just something the hottest thing out there. Um, but that Justin Bieber is a very um, uh, uh, strong Christian and uh, uh, is not afraid to share that with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's cool. And it talks about his new uh, new concert Movie. slash uh film slash documentary justin bieber never say never um which is in theaters now and uh and he they're they're actually handing out um these sort of movie guides for um for churches uh sort of promoting it as a good family entertainment kind of thing with christian messages uh like they did for the passion of the christ and the blind side and um, and I, I imagine, uh, you know, just other similar kind of movies. They're, they're sounds like they're they're trying to stick it in there with, um, you know, with with the the sort of popular Christian movies that have been out lately. So, um, 
which is completely unexpected. Now, I, all right, I, I'm not a Bieber fan, and and none of my family are. Um, so Jim, you could if you kind of got your hair down a little bit, you could kind of pull it off, maybe minus the mustache. I don't have enough hair anymore. It's, <laughs> it's, I just wanted to. I I got it cut yesterday, so it looked nice today, and he really mm, he butchered it. But that's not the point. But anyway, he says, um, you know, he that, that he was singing Christian songs on YouTube. Uh, his uh, mother, uh, Patty Millette, um, has shared her story of her conversion on TV and openly shares her beliefs in Bible verses. Uh, you know, interesting, it's, you know, it talks about his mother. It doesn't say anything about his father. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what the whole story is. I, I imagine you have to go watch the movie <laughs> uh, to right. find out about that. But, um, you know, it, all right, here's the big concern, and, and this is voiced in the article, um, is there have been a handful of other artists, um, uh, stars, who have been sort of outspoken about their faith. And, and here's what happens. They are held to a very high standard when they do that, all right? Because when you, when you are a, a public figure, all right, whether you're um, a, a a movie star or a, um, a politician or whatever, everyone's waiting for you to fall. Okay. And now politicians, people kind of expect it. And so it, it becomes less and less shocking every time it happens. All right. Just because politicians have that lousy reputation. Um, but people working in entertainment, you'd never expect them to have struggle <laughs> to fall. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that, but when you have ones that that are sort of use their position as an entertainer as to a greater or lesser degree a platform for evangelism. Um, you know, you had Miley Cyrus during the height of her popularity was doing videos with a friend on YouTube talking about how much she loves Jesus. You and I did a story about that. Yeah. All right. And then all of a sudden, she's doing these spreads that are a bit risque. All right. And and people are going, I thought you were a Christian. A bit? <laughs> okay. I mean, but the point is, um, I was trying to be nice. Well. Okay, okay, but, but no, seriously, that you know, that's that's the issue, though. I mean, you know, and as I was reading this, I was thinking the same thing that we did that story, Miley, Miley Cyrus, and she was talking about her faith, and you know, I I guess I'm not really worried about it being held to a higher standard, as much as it is, will fame change him? Will fame damage his faith? You know, um, that how. I, I mean, you know, it's, you know, also I think it's kind of funny um, that uh, one of his uh, producers is Jewish, um, and he encourages his faith because it's so important. So the two regularly play the Shema, Judaism's most central prayer, before the start of each concert, uh, which I guess, you know, not, I don't know, I guess I could do that. Hero Israel, Lord our one, Lord our God, the Lord is one. I would mean it, understand it differently than he would. But you know, it, it is part of uh, you know the old, you know the scriptures. I you know the, there's the whole thing about they're praying with people of other beliefs, but um, but I mean, yeah, the it would be. It, I don't, I, he's he's not saying there is no God, but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. I mean, right. that would be you know. <laughs> yeah, so I I appreciate that that he's not trying to turn just in Jewish, you know, sort of thing. Right. Not that At the same time, he's, very... he, this guy's not, you know, saying, hey, look, I really think your, your faith's stupid. You know, he's, he's really trying to affirm it in his way. So I guess I thought that's kind of interesting though, but, mm -hmm. but it, I think that's the question, you know, I mean, you know, um, Hollywood is such a strong in, 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 in the entertainment industry is so strongly non-Christian, mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, you have a guy like Ozzy Osbourne who was just, you know, 
has nothing to do with Christianity, makes that obvious very clear. And, um, you know, and some of these other folks that, you know, what do you do? You know. Actually, Ozzy's sort of, if you, if you look at his history, he's, he's sort of dabbled. Uh, at one point, he disappeared back in the 80s and ended up in a monastery somewhere. But, I mean, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's it's not, um, and actually, for that matter, a lot of the, the heavy metal rockers in the 80s are Christians. Uh, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, um, although he's openly gay, so do with that what you want. Um, but he put out a, his, his current band, in fact, is basically a Christian band. Um, is, that's my understanding. And, uh, uh, Dee Snyder from, uh, Twisted Sister, uh, uh, a lot of the guys from Iron Maiden. <laughs> These guys are all Christians. Um, but, uh, it's, but it, I mean, it's definitely, there's a lot of pressure. And, um, you know, there's just, you're, you there's, there's people coming at you. I was, I was talking to, uh, one of our members has a, um, their son is a, um, he, well, he works in Hollywood. All right. And, um, and he was, he was talking to them about how, how crazy life is out there that people just, you know, he, he said, when you're working on a film, you, you make a lot of money, but then you don't know when the next one is going to come along. And, um, and so it could be several months that, that you have no income at all until, you know, the next thing comes along. And so, you know, he makes a point of living pretty, uh, pretty modestly and, and saving his money because he doesn't know how long it's going to last, you know? And, uh, and, and so, but he says out there, it's, it's just most people, it, it, they live like there's no tomorrow and, and, um, and they, they're just, they're not grounded on, they've got no basis of anything. And yeah. so the gospel is, you know, is sort of grounded in a, a, a really huge reality. And, uh, and that it just doesn't connect with, um, money and fame are in everything. However, if he does mess up, he can always get an app for his iPhone to make confession. <laughs> right. You know? See, now, I have my iPhone right here. I don't have the confession app on it. You know, Dale and I, are with a couple other guys, are working on iPhone apps for Lutherans. And maybe we should come up with, you know, you know, uh, uh, I believe teach and confess, you know, the app for Lutherans, you know. <laughs> All right. So now here's the deal um, with this. I, I saw this on on the news and, and, and I heard, oh, you can use an app to go to confession. OK. And uh, it, was, it was pretty big in the news this week. And um, so. I, I looked into it because I was curious about it, um, you know, because we're working on developing some apps. And, and so I thought, well, what are they doing? Because this sounds kind of hokey. All right. So this app specifically that came out is just called Confession. All right. This, first of all, we have to say what it's not. This is not a intended as a substitute or replacement for the Roman Catholic sacrament of confession. All right. It's more intended to help prepare a person um, and, and the reason that it hit the news is because it got the, um, Nihil O Opstat. Yeah. In other words, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it, it got the seal of a, the Roman Catholic seal of approval from the bishop. Okay. Um, it's, it's what in, in, uh, in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we'd say it passed doctrinal review. <laughs> yes. And, uh, so, you know what the, what this does is it it basically helps a person examine themselves and, and look at their life and their sins, all right. And 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 then the idea is that this prepares you. Then you can go in and, and talk to the priest through the screen and all that kind of stuff, um, and and it just helps you get ready to do that. Well, actually, though, it uh, uh, yeah, it's a personalized step examination of the conscience. Uh, with password-protected profiles and a step-by-step -step guide to the sacrament. 
Uh, and I think it even you know, allows you to, um, um, you know, help keep track of your sins so that you have them to cancel, have them to, uh, confess. Right. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, there's I confess. Allow is another one. Allows users to track sins uh, on a list that they can take with them to the confessional booth. Yeah, yeah, and that's the funny thing. There's a whole bunch of these out there. It's just this is the first one that that got the approval. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Mia culpa. Um, a thorough exam of the surest is the surest way to make an accurate and holy confession. Um, provides a checklist of mortal and venial sins as well as suggested prayers for use before and after confession. Uh, obviously, it's, that wouldn't work for us uh, yeah, because we define mortal and venial right. sins very differently. I like this one. I repent. Worried about going to hell? Your peace of mind is just one click away. There's also I confess, bait, capital I, with the tag, too busy or too ashamed to go to a real priest? Yeah. Uh, both apps feature graphics that mimic the experience of confessing to a priest through a darkened stream, a screen. Emphasis on mimic. <laughs> so you like kind of hold it up and <laughs> there's a picture there or something. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it's see, sad. That people I already have that. Cause DL, I just see Dale's picture here on the other side. See, that's just this. You know, that's <laughs> it. He, it, it's my, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, um, just, I am for confession right there. You know, you like hold up a piece of paper so you can just, you know, talk to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then there's a bunch of other ones that, uh, you know, there's one that, um, where you can record your confessions with your own voice, upload them, and share them with the world, as, lis- as well as listen to the confessions of others. Boy, that's, that sounds like <laughs> something that, like, blackmailers are going, Ooh. <laughs> and then there's uh, the other one I like is um, uh, Penance, a free app game features public confession that users choose their own confession door, confess, absolve, or reflect. It rings notable confessors on a league table with the foremost winning titles and the right to issue week-long edicts to the faithful. <sighs> okay. Uh, Important that we talk about confession, all right? Um now, is the the Lutheran understanding of, of confession, or what I would call the biblical understanding, but that may seem kind of pompous to some, um, is that the purpose of confession is not so that you can go and somebody can give you a step by step guide to how to get forgiveness. All right, you go to confess your sins so that you can receive forgiveness, so that your your guilty conscience um, can can be comforted. All right. And so you go, and, and it's not that, you okay, here's the hoops that you have to jump through. It's here's the hoops that Jesus already jumped through. And he didn't just jump through hoops. He right. got nailed to a cross for you. Okay? Right. And so I, I, you and are I've, forgiven. I mean, I've had people come to me for private confession. Mm-hmm. And the Lutheran confession say that we only keep it because of absolution. Now, this is a time where you can bring the gospel to bring directly to somebody's life. You know, and I've you know, I've had, oh gosh, uh, people dealing with uh, grief, uh, people confess, uh, people dealing with, with anger issues, um, you know, all kinds of different things. And, you know, that they just really, you know, um, I, and I mean, my, sometimes uh, you even get the, the, uh, the false guilt. Yeah, you know, somebody guilty about something, you're like, why in the world are you feeling guilty about that? You know, uh, you kind of did everything you could. Or, you know, you, you, you know, you, I don't see what's wrong. Uh, but they need the word of forgiveness. I had a psychiatrist come to me and uh, saying that there's a guy in the hospital who was gay and, uh, you know, and they're all trying to tell him it's okay. And he's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. This is not what God wants. And I don't know what, the, you know, he was, uh, he, you know, he was, he was quite religious and just, you know, so they asked her what to do because they go, you, you know, you're, you're, you're religious, you know, you deal with them. So she's like, just, she asked me, she said, well, what do you think I should do? I said, tell him he's forgiven. Hey, God, my brilliant. So, so, you know, and he's, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong. Absolutely. Why do you think Jesus hung on the cross? Well, you think he's there for the guys who got everything together? Well, you know, I said, you know, here it is. I mean, he came to the world to save sinners. 
And uh, so, uh, congratulations, you're a sinner. He died for you. Yeah, his, this is what it's for. And you have these things that bother you and stuff. Remember what he did. That's what it's all about. And uh, so I, I asked her, saw her again a couple months later, and uh, asked her how, you know, whatever happened to that guy? She said, he looked at me, he sighed, and he said, somebody, I needed somebody to tell me that. <laughs> you know? People do. He, to, they they don't know that it's there and available to them. And, and and the problem is with this whole confession thing is that so many people have sort of seen it on T V and stuff and it's this and it, it and it and it's portrayed, I'm sure, even worse on T V than you know, than and it's just it people see it as this sort of Mickey Mouse thing and they go, There's no way that, that I can jump through some hoops and, and get forgiveness. It's confession. Hard. As seen on T V. But yeah. wait, there's more. Not only do you get, <laughs> but, you know, and it's just, you know, people can see through that and, and it's just, um, you know, what, and, and you know, and, and here we come along and, and say, well, actually there's nothing about the sort of, you know, penance stuff that, I mean, if you look at the history of penance, it had nothing to do with how to get forgiveness. The whole point of, of penance was, was not to get God's forgiveness, but to get forgiveness from the church from the, the people that they had sinned against and, and were there, yeah, you need to go and, and if you've, you've sinned against people, you need to go and ask for their forgiveness, um, you know, so that you can be forgiven. And, um, but and it never really had anything where it to do all with it. So. started actually was with, um, after the, um, one of the persecutions of the church, because you had some pastors, what, it was either yeah, Diocletian had, or Domitian. I can never remember. I always get this. Well, yeah, but you had some priests and some even some bishops who had denounced the Christian faith. And after um, Christianity was legalized under Constantinople, uh, under Constantine, they wanted to come back and 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 serve as uh, priests and bishops again. And the church had a hard time with this. I and mean, what do we do? You know, and so, you know, it developed then that they wanted to, you know, do a restitution. Restitution's a good thing. You know, I think certainly as Christian people, we always want to encourage restitution. But, you know, it got to be something that was forced. Um, I mean, and they even had to spend a certain amount of time by themselves in reflection. They had to spend 40 days. And that was 40 days were called a quarantine. Huh. Oh, see, didn't know that. That's interesting. Huh. And that's, it, that's the origin of that word, that, that quarantine you that you're stuck for yourself. Huh. Well, they also had to um, sit on the church steps, and as people were coming to the service, beg for forgiveness for, like, oh. weeks in a row. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally turned into something else entirely. Right. I mean... You know, I mean, I there, there's certain things that are good things. I mean, I encourage people. You know, when when you, to, you know, when you reconcile, you know, be willing to make recon, restitution. You know, how what can I do? You know, so that it, you know, if necessary, if possible. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a, it was a good thing, but it got you know twisted. And but that's just you know what kind of what history does and in 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 time does and other things, and it uh, uh, really did cause a, a huge issue. Um, so, you know, and then, by, but, but Luther really tried to clean that out. He did so many things. It's all about the grace of God. It's all about the forgiveness of God, that people can come and hear the forgiveness of God. Um, but, uh, so, I thought that was kind of neat. But obviously, so, you don't get to do that in Egypt. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, or did you right. have a story you wanted well, to go to? Well, no, I, I was just going to say with this app thing, I was thinking about, you know, could you do a Lutheran version of this? All right. And you, and in the in the sense that it is there, you kind of could. I mean, you could you could like take Luther's question and answers of sort of self-examination. I I think that 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 idea of of having that, you know, before you I'm I'm getting because okay, it used to be that if you're going to go to communion on Sunday, that you had to go to your pastor's house on Saturday night and and what they had they'd call it announcing for communion, which was actually 
um, before that, it was you had to go to private confession and absolution. And then the, they sort of changed it into, well, you just got to stop in and let him know you're going to, um, to communion and, and he sort of checks you off and, 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 you know, and in some cases he would, he would make a point of saying, you know, do you, are you, uh, do you repent of your sins and, you know, and that sort of thing. And, and, and hopefully that they'd be doing something like that, uh, to give it some meaning besides just sort of uh, make sure that there's a, a wafer there for me, you know, um, an RSVP and, uh, but you know, we've, we've sort of moved away from that. And so I could see, uh, an app that, that is a, a sort of personal, uh, a reflection, um, sort of thing, uh, sort of asking those sort of questions where you say, you know, have I, um, ha- have I sinned against God? Yeah, absolutely. I have, you know, and, um, but not just sort of in a, in a general sense, but, but have you, you know, sort of going through the commandments and, and have you, have you done this? Have you done that? And, and really sort of reflecting on that. And, um, and then, but at the same time, I, I would, my fear with anything like that is that people would see that as a replacement for the real thing. Um, you know, because the thing is you don't need an app for that. You've got a pastor for that. And, um, and you know, and, and any Lutheran pastor you can go to and and confess your sins and and get that kind of forgiveness. So yeah, um, actually, um, I got I, I just I've forgotten that you know one of the ways that people would get try to get around confession in Luther's day, of course, was to uh, the buying of indulgences and you know the viewing of of relics and things like that that they believed could earn them forgiveness and the relics of course were things you know the bones of certain states so my question is if this bone or some organ was from a pope or a holy person was trans transplanted to another person would that person then become <laughs> a living <go> relic <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the thing that i kept thinking about that, that really disturbed me about <laughs> this next story all right. So, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger um, was a uh, now Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Right. He was a, um, a listed as an organ donor, mm-hmm. but now that he's Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, he no longer is, because you can't be an organ donor when you're um, when you're Pope. Now the. Okay. Director of the Holy See Press Office, um, uh, Reverend Federico Lombardi, um, said that, uh, he said, the idea that a man of his age, when he dies, that somebody might present himself seeking his organs makes no sense. It's surreal. Right? Right. Um, no, you can still be an organ donor at that age, I would assume. Uh, just, just age. I mean, you know, the, you know, you, you, you gotta be younger. You gotta be fairly, you know, I think young and healthy. I don't think, you know, I think you get a certain age and the organs themselves just because of old age are, are wearing down. I mean, that's just, you well, know, none of us stays young forever, but maybe we have a doctor or somebody who can sponsor, you know, you know, speak to that a little bit more clearly. If you can tell us, you know, is there an upper age limit on uh, organ donation? Uh, let us know at podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I mean, otherwise, I thought that answer made perfect sense. But you know, okay, but that's true for anybody. Yeah, okay, right. you, you hit this age, you know, stuff. But the fact of the matter is, no, it's more than that. Um, that um, they, uh, you know, that they they said, you know, when he became pope, that became obsolete. His organ organ donor card. Um, Right, so it's because, not just his um, age. Right, it's just, it's just not his age, um, but uh, that actually because his uh, it's just that the um, the Pope's body remains intact because it remains to the future Church. It's also po- understandable in view of possible future veneration. It says referring to future sainthood. It doesn't take anything away from the validity and beauty of the gift of organ donation. Oh, very nice brain. Yeah. Because he was a strong um, um, 
encourager of uh, organ donation at one time in his life, uh, Brad Singer. And he himself did uh, have a card for organ donation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it says until the last century, papal organs were removed to make embalming more durable. The organs of 22 popes are preserved as relics in the church of Saints Anastasio and Vincent. Um, and uh, so they, they stopped that in nineteen early 1900s. All right. But all right. So do you get I mean, do people get what's going on here that he can't be an organ donor because they need to preserve his body intact so that people can pray to him after he's dead? Right. That's what's going on here. All right. We have a problem. I don't want that. People, I don't want people. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> there there are certain reasons why, you know, Lutherans are not Catholics. Um, yeah. You know, so um, and, right. and, and, and. we pray to Jesus. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and and and, you know. He, he, his heart goes out to us, not literally, but he did shed his blood for us, all right? And he gives it to us with his body in the bread and wine, not as an organ donor, um, but, you know, in in the sacramental presence. And, uh, yeah, this this just, you, you see this and you go, what? okay, so what if he was younger? You know, what if you were capable of it? What, what a tremendous, and, and I, I, I've read stories of, I think we may have even, re I don't know if we reported on it or not, um, but of uh, priests who have um, who have given kidneys and, and things like that to um, to members of their church that needed them and stuff like that. And I, I just thought that was so inspiring. And and um, and, and I, I, but I just thought, what? I mean, you know, what about uh, what about marrow um, donation? Which you don't have to be dead for that, but you know, then you like you get into this whole kind of weird thing with, um, well, boy, if he, if he donated bone marrow to somebody, then you know what would that mean for them that that would have some sort of holy significance, right? Because they put this emphasis on body parts. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, for Roman Catholics, it's a big deal. Although most Roman Catholics that I know are, they sort of dismiss that whole thing. But, um, it, I, I, I just see this and I go, boy, you know, this is, this is one of the sort of logical outcomes that, that you say, you know, it's more important that we keep you intact so people can pray to you than you actually be able to help somebody, you know, after your death. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent mm -hmm. of, of organ donation. I think what a, you know, we, as Christians, we want to serve others and, um, you know, what a tremendous opportunity to, to serve people even after you're gone. And, yep. um, I, uh, yep. My, uh, driver's license says that I'm an organ donor. I uh, don't think anybody want my eyes. I can't see too well out of them anywhere. But the heart's pretty in good shape, and yeah, the liver's in pretty good shape too. It's had a good time. The kidneys still work, so yeah, there's a few parts many people might be able to use yet. Yeah. But I always thought that was extremely important that uh, we do that. So, yeah, I <laughs> I turned down the opportunity for Pope just on that basis. <laughs> Not that I'm in the wrong. I take the job. <laughs> Pays real well. <laughs> Yeah, I think your your wife might object, though. What I object to is they automatically treat me like an inferior. I'm going to marry that man. So, uh... All right, well, we, we stepped into Egypt and back out. Um, we should go in there again. Um... Yeah, say that was Keith Green. So you want to go back to Egypt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not quite like that. <laughs> I, I don't think that uh, we've got mana burgers, you know, for, for any of these guys. Um, oh, right, mana so. bread. But anyway, um, yeah, this is a, a, an article. And it was in USA Today, but I'd also seen it on a couple other things. Uh, you know, Dale is, is a real big proponent of, um, you know, the Christian martyrs around the world and persecuted Christians. 
And of course, a lot of the persecuted Christians are in uh, Muslim lands. Um, and that's one of the questions now coming up in Egypt is, you know, what's going to happen uh, in Egypt uh, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, under uh, uh, Hosni de Mur- Murbrak, um I just butchered his name. Um, you know, the, the Christians, the Coptic Christians in Egypt have been uh, 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 discriminated against. And now it's going to happen under, you know, whoever winds up ruling, you know, will, will they... Yeah, who's going to defend them? Who's going to keep them safe? Right, right. Because Mubarak, while he didn't do much to help them, he kind of left them alone. Um, it, it sort of reminds me of what happened in Iraq, that um, Saddam Hussein, for all of the horrible things that he did, um, he promoted religious tolerance, and and um, in the sense that if you know there were. Um, um, uh, drawing a blank now. The the Christian group that was there. Um, well, the, there were Christians in the land, and he yeah. just allowed them to be. You know, he didn't do anything. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Tariq Aziz, his secretary, his uh, uh, um, um, version of the Secretary of State, um, chief diplomat, was a Presbyterian and a very faithful Christian. He, he you know. Not to say that he, you know, agreed with everything that, I don't know what he agreed with and what he didn't, but, you know, but it's interesting that a Christian person was part of his, his government. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, and, and, and since he's been out, things have gotten really bad. I mean, you just. Or the Christians just, there. Yeah. Google Iraq Christian and you'll say, I mean, Christians are, are desperately trying to get out of the country. Because right. and, all of all of a sudden all bets are off for them, right? Um, and you know it's the same thing. I'm, we're going to defend. It's interesting that whoever the person who wrote this article just said real bluntly he said um, the single most dangerous thing in the world to be right now is a Christian in a Muslim country. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually got an email um, passed on to me from one of my members who has a friend from Egypt who is a Coptic Christian. And he asked her, and this was sort of like through channels that he was able to, to talk to her. And I'm not sure if she's in the, in the, I think she might be in the United States now, but she saw his connections there or something. I I didn't totally understand, but he was asking her, Hey, what's, you know, what's going on with the Christians there? And, um, and the response was, they're all really afraid of what, what's going to happen, of who's going to replace Mubarak. Because the trend is that, you know, I mean, here, you know, we we're in the, in the Western world, we're moving toward a more, uh, sort of tolerant, you know, the whole multiculturalism and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, what that at least does is, is in theory, um, promotes, uh, you know, religious tolerance and, and, and allowing, uh, different religions to, at least um, sort of practice their beliefs. Um, Now you can get into the whole, you know, um, we've talked about the sort of, um, oh, pharmacists being forced to dispense abortion pills and stuff like that. And and that's really important. But, um, you know, here we're talking about people who are facing prison, who are facing death. Um, just for being Christians. And, and the trend is that when there's a coup and, and a new, uh, group comes in, a lot of these guys are, are financed and, and supported by the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, which is the, uh, organization where you, from which you get groups like Hamas and Al Qaeda, um, that, uh, are, oh, you're a Christian? Well, you know, I've got a bullet with your name on it, sort of thing. Um, and so, since right now nobody knows who's going to end up replacing Mubarak, um, boy, it's, it's not a, a happy time for Christians over there. Um, and, the, and there's not a whole lot we can do for them either, except pray, uh, which that's a lot right there. 
Um, and so what I, what I would encourage, um, you to do is to be praying for the people over there right. because they're, they're afraid. And, um, but you know, at the same time, there was a, like, there was an article I posted on my Facebook page about, um, a, uh, where there were, uh, Muslims who were, um, that wanted to pray and uh, I don't know if it was cause they were a different kind of Muslim or something like that. But Christians actually formed a, a sort of human shield circle around them to allow them to pray. And I thought, I thought that that really spoke volumes about, you know, here we, even though we don't agree with your beliefs, you know, um, we're, we're going to protect you from the mobs. Mm. Um, and, and uh, Go ahead. Right. Uh, if we understand too that within most Muslim countries, that you know, you know, the church and the state are one, and you know, they're in, in, in they fully expect that the state will you know appear, you know, uh, uh, completely to Muslim law. Which you know, even and you look back, uh, yeah, um, they were very tolerant of Christians. You know, once they conquered the land and you know, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, took yeah. them all. Yeah, then they were, then they were, you know. But the, some of the first caliphs, you know, uh, you know, to expel the Christians and Jews from the land, you know, they did, you know, took the whole thing. Um, and then, of course, there's the famous, um, um, cathedral of uh, holy wisdom in uh, Constantinople. And when that became Istanbul, uh, that was taken over and became a Muslim mosque. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that uh became that, a secular state. It's now a museum, but uh That song Istanbul was Constantinople, you know? Like if you know the whole giant. history <laughs> Yeah. It's it's actually if you know the history, it's a pretty creepy song. <laughs> it, cause it wasn't just a name change. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's uh, true. So yeah, definitely be praying for them and and uh, and recognize yeah, there's there's Christians there. Although one thing I have heard that, that I thought was kind of interesting is the Christians are um, are are doing as you know as far as just like food and 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 uh, sustenance and, and that sort of thing, the Christians are doing better than most of the Muslims are because they're looking after each other and uh, and you know. That ties in with, you know, one of the reasons that Christianity has become the major world religion that it is, is because throughout history, when huge disasters have hit, Christians have looked after each other. When plagues and and things like that have gone on, uh, you know, Christians took care of each other and, and nursed each other back to health and, and, and things like that. And there's, you know, if you look into the, the history of that stuff, um, that's, that's what happens. And, and so the Christians ended up surviving, um, whereas a lot of other people didn't because, um, they didn't have people to look after them. And, uh, and it's not that, that they were sort of, oh, we're only going to take care of the Christians. Um, but they were they were already taking care of each other, and so you know, sort of membership has its benefits. Um, but you know, certainly they would anybody else that that sought their aid, just as it is today. That um, you know, it always gets me when when somebody comes looking for um, needing food or gas or something like that, and, and comes to the church, and 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 so often they'll say, "Well, I'm I'm Lutheran, or I I've attended there once or twice, or or something like that." And you know full well that they haven't, and and that um, and and I mean there've even been times where I've sort of checked up on their stories after the fact and just out of curiosity, and nah, they're they were making that up, but um, but the. They think that that we'll take better care of them if they're sort of one of our own, and I don't know. Um, no, that has nothing to do with it. it. It's more if if you have need and and we're able to help you, we're going to help you. But um, so if you know if if people are in need, that's what we're all about as Christians. You know, is is, is helping people, um, and so that's the advantage is that. If you are a Christian, then chances are you're in a community of Christians that are already helping each other. 
So that that is the one advantage that they have being there is they have each other. Besides, obviously, their faith in Christ. Right. Finally, our last story tonight deals. I don't even understand. I mean, it's been a long day for me, folks. My brain's a little tired, but it's titled Americans Give Poor Marks the State of Our Moral Union. But yet I couldn't find anything in the article that talked about morality. And I you know, I mean, it's all about just civility. You know, I mean, all the things it's talking about is, you know, the nation's harsh political rhetoric. I'm not sure what that has to do with, I mean, you know, because if you'd asked me, you know, you know, talked about, you know, Americans over 65 um, are most likely to grade the country's moral climate with a D or an F. Um, well, what do they mean by that? Because the only thing they ever talk about are the is the Tea Party and the shooting of Representative Giffords. Mm-hmm. Well, if you ask me, I would say, yeah, it's you know, there's there's a lot of stuff out there corrupting our culture left and right. I don't think, yeah, I, I think talk radio and you know all the talking heads on TV are kind of the the least bit of it, um, because I mean, you know, I have no trouble, you know, turning all that off I mean I don't listen to any of it right you know but I see a a coarsening of our culture in all kinds of places I mean just look at you know one of the songs that was up for a Grammy tonight yeah there's an an article in in the Boston Globe today a a column and the guy was talking the guy was talking about how um kiddo uh, uh, um because Boston wants to forbid smoking even in some public parks and stuff and you know he's like you know there's a time when people smoked a lot more and cursed and swore and did other things a lot less you know why is it you know okay once we're, we're one is bad obviously for polluting our our health but a lot of our culture is polluting our our moral sense and our minds mm-hmm. and the minds of our kids right but I'm not sure. I don't know too many kids are out there who are listening to talk radio. Right. Either yeah. Keith Olbermann or La Brush Limbaugh, you know? I don't know yeah. anybody that's listening to that. Or, or Glenn Beck or uh, Rachel Maddow. I don't know anybody listen, you know? But I know a lot of them who are cult- uh, morally just mixed up. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we all deal with, uh, you know, kids in our churches who are sexually active, who, uh, or when they're in their 20s, they move in with somebody. And really have no idea why that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clueless. No, you know. And and the thing is, that's the thing. It used to be that you could talk to a couple and say, um, say you, do you know what what God has to say about this? And they go, Yeah, yeah, I know. It's you know, and and they knew. All right. Nowadays, like, no, why? What? You know, and 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 they're not. They're not trying to play dumb, all right? They really don't know because it is considered the norm, all right? When you turn on TV and watch the sitcoms, all right, that's the norm. That's what, and, and or, or that is what Hollywood portrays as the norm. All right. Uh, I was even watching the movie Enchanted the other night, and, um, you yeah. know, and when she, when uh, 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 Gazelle shows up in the real world, and she's taking a shower at this guy's apartment and stuff, having sl- fallen asleep there the night before, and this guy's fiance shows up and he says, she says to him, "Look, you know, I understood, you know, no spending the night. You know, we had to draw boundaries." And I said, "Oh, I good. This guy's sensitive." I was like, "Well, okay, no draw, no spending the night, but anything else is okay, you know." Like, you yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I never really, you know, that line never caught me that way before. You know, I, you know, before that, I thought this was good because I even remember when my kids were very little and a Parents Magazine had an uh, an article, you know, the first sleepover, you know, when, you know, when this woman talking about, you know, her, uh, you know, should she let her boyfriend spend the night with her? 
you know, and 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 feeling this really, you know, uh, uh, what, what's this telling the kids? What what kind of example is this? And her friends all going, I don't see the problem with it. I think you know what the problem is just as well as you I know. know. They, they, you know, he he needs to see you as a full person. I'm like, the problem is it is when the, you know, kid is you know. 14 or 15 years old, he's not going to see any problems sleeping with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I've, I've, I've personally seen the, the result of that with a a girl that I had in my confirmation class once who was, um, she was in my class because her dad was, um, living with one of my members. And, uh, so because of that, you know, she came to confirmation class, but, Dad told her, as long as you love the guy, that it's okay. Well, um, you know, I, uh, as I recall, I baptized her baby. Um, uh, and I don't, I don't think she was out of high school yet. And, uh, so I, you know, it, the thing that caught me about this article, though, um, was this whole sort of connection that was hinted at um, that there's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, and, and that is the whole this whole connection between uh, politics and religion, and, and that you know the Tea Party scene as a sort of Christian uh, party, the um, the uh, Republican Party for the most part. There's a you know people like, oh white evangelicals, you know they're they're Republicans and um, you know, and, and so if, if you want to be a, you know, a lot of people have it in their heads that if you want to be a Christian, you've got to be a Republican or Tea Party or something like that, that there's no such thing as a Christian Democrat. And that's ridiculous, right? And I personally, I tend to vote pretty conservative, right? But um, but the, I've got plenty of friends that are not, um, you know, that are Christians, but vote differently than I do. And you know what? There's that's fine, all right. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to vote. I'm not going to tell you that Jesus is a Republican. He, you know, he, he thinks we're all sinners, and he all just and, thinks he is. <laughs> and, and we all need forgiveness, you know, because and I have said this before that that no matter who you vote for, he's a sinner and or she, and and they're going to mess up. And right. none of them are perfect. It's actually again a very I think interesting when you look at. Um, you know the Protestant Church, uh, Protestant churches in general, and and, and you know, I guess Roman Catholic. I mean, you know, you know, we, we America overall was very progressive up until the '60s, and then there was a reaction back against that. And you know, at that time, evangelical churches tended to trend more conservative politically as well. Um, and it's interesting you know, to, to see that history within uh, 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 Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and some other church bodies, as opposed to where, you know, a lot of mainline uh, tend to be, you know, people we don't talk about it as often, but tend to be extremely uh, left wing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, 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 but yeah, I, you know, sometimes I just think sometimes we get, you know, talk a little bit too much about it. Uh, <laughs> You know, just let people do their thing. Right, right. And and the thing is, we need to send a message to the unchurched that you don't have to be... A, I mean, if if your political orientation is keeping you from church, then either you're looking at the wrong church or you don't know what church is about. All right? right. Because it's not about politics. All right? And and so I, I'm always afraid that... The, that's going to keep people away. And, but the thing is the you know, I, I, it's like, <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to put in there, you know, there's neither Jew nor Greek slave nor free Republican or Democrat, you know? <laughs> well, I think there's, you know, I, I think there, that does get to be an, uh, an issue. Um, um, a political, um, there's two political guys, political science, professors at Concordia University in Mequon, and one was a Republican and one was a Democrat. And they were going around talking to different churches about, I think this, I think it was the last election, you know, about perspectives on, on voting. 
And um, they said that there was uh, one of the guys said that they went to a Missouri Synod church. Now, these guys are both Missouri Synod Lutherans. And the guy's like, I don't know how you can be a Missouri Synod Lutheran and, and be vote and Christian, really, and vote for Democrats. What the pastor's telling him. You know, the, 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 this is the, 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 you know, the things that the party stands for. And I just don't see how you can, you know, you know, vote in good conscience for anyone and, you know, and, and, you know, almost threatened to bring the parent, bring the guy up on charges. I mean, it was just really, you know. Huh. And, uh, but he said he'd go to, he went to an ELCA church and, it, you know, they, they had just the opposite. I'm sure. You know, how can you be part of the Republican Party? It's, this is a terrible thing. And, uh, that they just thought it was really strange, you know, that, that, that neither one of them had this, you know, that, 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 you know, they were able to disagree, but disagree, you know, say, you know, but we don't think there's a necessarily a Christian answer to each one of these things. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, because but, the, uh, neither one, neither party is perfect. And, um, you know, there's Christians within both of them. And, and there was a day that the Republican party was seen as the atheist party. Um, you know, so that's, that's shifted. So, uh, you know what? Jesus is our savior. Not anybody in Washington. And, uh, and we need to keep that in mind that that's a whole, and politics are important. All right. They are, but not in the church. Not at all. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, um, I, and I think, and I try not to even say a whole lot about it. I mean, uh, in my personal viewpoints and stuff. Uh, I have one of the, the 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 pastors here, and I mean he he's kind of he's he's kind of a pip, but anyway, but he he comes in you know great big McCain Palin sticker, I mean, a button and and you know just always you know, and I, I and I've just often said you know, are you are you able to really reach you know a lot of the people in this area? With this, you know, real clear, and, and, and often, you know, insulting Easterners, you know, with, you know, uh, you know, Midwesterners, they, this is their view on this stuff, you know, well, you're not in the Midwest, you're in the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, you gotta kind of understand where the Romans are if you're gonna talk to the Romans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, don't ever, and I don't care whether you're a pastor. Or, or a, a lay person, I don't care where you're at, but if you're a Christian, don't ever, ever let your politics trump your faith and trump your witness. Right. Well, it's hard to do. People get very passionate about it. They are. And, it used and, to be, and, say, don't ever argue, never talk about two things, religion and politics. Yeah. But... Uh, just, it's yeah. it it's important, but it's not hey, as important as souls. You know, uh, 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 and it's it, uh, you know, out here in my area, if you're going to you know talk about being active in reaching the unchurched, then it can't be based on the politics because where a lot of people are and where I am, it's going to be two different things. So I just yeah, you know, it's okay. Whatever you think, God. Yeah, because, you know, there's no... Is that your gift, putting up with that guy? <sighs> How can I put it? What the, the, it's always a lesser of two evils in my mind. Mm, right. You know, and, uh, yeah, the, 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 the Democrats may have a few more evils overall in my mind. But, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't understand how they can support abortion on demand. Let's say how they can do some of those things they do. I really don't. Um, you know, but... Um, you know, I don't know if people, you know, but on the other hand, he's somebody who, you know, they, he just didn't necessarily care for the guy. A guy voted for Ted Kennedy, so I don't really care for him. There's a lot of disagree with. But man, when, you know, my family needed help, he was there. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Uh, politics always take up so much time. Anybody have any thoughts, any other things? Let us know at podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I we got a, a link uh, from George, and um, and I it was something that I had seen before, 
and uh, it's uh, soundcloud.com um, where you, you can upload audio and then people can, um, yeah, we, we've gotten comments on YouTube where people said, okay, at, at this point in the show at, you know, 28 minutes and 30 seconds, you said this or, or whatever. What this actually does is you can upload audio and then people can can sort of, while they're listening to it, they can click and, and um, at right at that spot and leave a comment. And that comment gets attached to that point in the audio. Uh, it's really a pretty cool thing if you've got a whole bunch of people listening to something and, and, and you get the sort of stream of comments. Um, and, and I looked at it. But when you only have two like we do, I'm not too sure about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, yeah, the other thing is that um, they're, they've got paid accounts and free accounts. The free account, you can only have uh, two hours worth of, of stuff um, up there at a time. And it's not like, oh, yeah, that's really not going to work for us, um, you know, without a, without paying for it. And it's not something I'm going to pay for. Um, and there's no way to, to easily convert like a podcast into that format or anything. So, I mean, but it is a cool service and, and it's something that's definitely something to kind of keep in the back of, of your mind. If you're, if you do, I mean, I do a lot of audio, um, online and stuff and and so it, it's definitely something that i'm gonna keep in the back of my mind and um and since i'd seen it before george I, I appreciate you pointing it out because i didn't know where it came from um i had just seen it at like and gadget was using it or something like that and um but i didn't i didn't know the site where they how they were able to do that so um yeah it's pretty cool amazing technology and and you know there's just all kinds of opportunities to use it to bring the love of christ to people so um but yeah love to hear from you podcast at crossfeednews.com thanks for listening watching take care and god bless good night everybody god bless you.